Five. Sorry about that. My computer is very old and she could be replaced. But I've got a lot of money. Anyways, uh, hello, Wes. Um, I'm Mark Flanagan. This is uh, Norm Smith and Anne Mac, as you can see. Oh, uh, like a lot of people in the room, I'm a big fan of Anne Mac, but it's not all I meant to know. It wasn't. I kind of took a buff look of the mythologies of various world cultures, such as, you know, like, like Greek and Greek, Roman, uh, uh, Japanese, Asian, and of course, most of the uh, mythology as well. Those kind of myths would like to know about kind of the, you know, stories about gods and monsters and heroes and fantastic worlds kind of speak to me a bit. And kind of similar to the way anime does for me. And it's even better when they kind of merge together and become one thing. Like, Norse mythology is a pretty popular uh, thing for anime to draw upon for inspiration and uh, stories and whatnot. Um, so I'd like to uh, just uh, show you some of where the case was popped up and uh, so <laughs> yeah, just show you what's going on. What we're talking about first as well is uh, a bit of a crash course on kind of the finer points of it. You know, I'd say maybe some of you might know a good deal of it already, you know, but there are some things that they get referenced a lot and I uh, think that helps have a bit of, bit of knowledge of uh, all the other things you know, before you went through it. And also talk about a bit you know, kind of the Vikings and the Norse people who uh, believe in this in the first place and uh, why they believe it and so on. So let's go on to that. Who are the Vikings? Oh, they were uh, uh, active in the uh, late 8th and mid 11th century, uh, mostly around northern Germany, Scandinavia, Denmark. Um, and they were like a kind of a seafaring people. They uh, traveled very, very uh, far, far afield. They went as far as like, uh, Byzantium. And they even went as far as Iceland and even as far as North America, uh, the place that they called Finland. And they were uh, primarily like uh, merchants, farmers, and fishermen. They just, uh, they were doing the harbour once they turned to um, by raiding like, you know, uh, various coastal places and uh, places in Britain and so on like that. And uh, to sustain themselves now, they uh, just rob other riches and stuff like that and, and trade them with, uh, between themselves for, uh, for food and uh, other items that they would need. Now, they were uh, believed in, like, not in the Norse gods and so forth, but uh, for the public, they were uh, Christianized between the 8th and 12th centuries. Here we have uh, Uyghur, <laughs> this is a Norse star, uh, rocking the Viking look, and of course, the Viking Gundam. Actually, we made our long ships, as you can see there. And uh, Dory and Brogy, for one piece there. Um, Actually, the horned helmet thing, you know, you've seen a lot there. Actually, Vikings didn't actually wear horned helmets at all, because it would have been uh, in, impeding them in battle. It's more like Dory here on the left. It's why more their style. Now, no creation. Oh, it's, I'll explain this. <laughs> 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 Just decided to put that up there. <laughs> <laughs> Then sparks came out of the world of fire and kind of fog and mist came out of the world of ice and they kind of melted together. And now that came Ymir, the first frost giant, and also came to be uh, out Humla, I'm not sure how to pronounce that one, but kind of the half time warrior giant cow. He sustained, he sustained himself by um, um, drinking the cow's milk and uh, I told to stay herself by uh, licking the, uh, a block of uh, salt. And as I told her, licked away the block of salt, um, she revealed. Um, a man inside, and that was Buri, who was the first guy. And his grandsons then were um, Odin, Vili, and Ve. Uh, Odin being, I might be familiar with you, the, kind of the uh, primary head Norse guy. Um, so, anyways, how do they repay you know, all this thanks to by uh, Odin, Vili, and Ve? And then killed him here. And they basically used all the bits of them to create the world. So they, they made the, they used the skull to make the sky, they used all, all his blood and stuff uh, with all the water and oceans in the world. They used his bones to get the rocks and the mountains. Yeah, so how about that? <laughs> <laughs> then out of that thing grew uh, Yggdrasil, the cosmic astral, which supports the nine worlds. And at the very top of well, this is an eagle, um, and the speeding of its wings creates a wind, where winds in the world for men. At the very, very bottom there, there's a serpent called Nidhogg, but not at the roots. And running between those is a squirrel who is carrying out insults between the two of them. This is kind of stirring shit, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and um, 
again, with goats and deer, then there's no other shoots and things uh, that keep it going. It's um, tended at, at the earth roots by a trio of women called the Norns. Um, to, uh, to, to, they bring water from the well to every day and water its roots to keep it, to keep it alive. Now, these branches are nine realms. Um, you see up top there, they have Asgard, it's the home of the gods. They have the Vanaheim, which is a uh, home of the, of the Vanir, who are another tribe of, of gods. Um, there was actually a war between the Aesir, who dwelt in Asgard, and the Vanir, who dwelt in Vanaheim. They came to an understanding after the Asgardians uh, took some hostages from the Vanir side. <laughs> the people uh, we also have the Alfheim, uh, which is the world of elves. Then, kind of right there in the middle, then is Midgard, the middle world, where, uh, where men, men dwell. Then on the outskirts of that we have Jotunheim, which is the land of the Jotunheim the frost giants. And then we have um, Niflheim, which was the, the, the realm of cold and ice. And then the Muspelheim, which was the realm of uh, primordial fire. And then there is the Svartalfheim, where the dwarves will. And then we have the Helheim, which is the underworld. You might see the reference there, where it pops up a lot. But for example, we have the Mora Tambi Mortuary from uh, Ligama. And uh, more recently, in Sword Art Online, with the Alpine Online World Tree there. Now, Asgard home is the home of the gods. It's connected to Midgard by a rainbow bridge. And it has many like, wonderful uh, feasting halls and stuff. There's uh, probably one of the best known is called Valhalla, where um, warriors who died a noble death in battle were invited there by Odin to just, uh, feast and uh, just party forevermore. And that uh, hall is uh, kind of a uh, uh, tended by the Valkyries. Now, they, they ride out onto the battlefields and um, they bring the, the most, uh, most worthy people who die in the battlefields up to Valhalla. And um, they speak, uh, when they're not doing that, they just work as the firemates then, just serving their meat all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a pretty, it was a pretty sweet deal for a Viking uh, to uh, die in battle. So they were renowned for being fearless. So you know, if, 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 I, if I live, I get paid, I get money. But if I die, I, I can go to Valhalla and carry on. <laughs> <laughs> and like you might see it at the Valkyrie, Valkyrie very thick fighter from the Macron series, and a little less so in the Euro Ultimate Valkyrie. The Valkyrie comes to work on this incredible family. Now, if Odin is the odd father, he is like the top boss man of the Norse gods. Um, he will have gone here with, with a spear that would never miss his target, and you run upon Snake here, which was an eight legged horse, with four legs more faster than it was. Wasn't that the song of Loki? Hmm? Um, the four legged horse was in the south. Yes, Loki, I get on to Loki. Loki is a bit of a kinky dude. And <laughs> <laughs> it's, so small. it's like Loki took the form of a mare, and, uh, in the, and while he was in the form of that horse, uh, he then uh, gave birth to Slate there. Oh, Weird dude. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, Odin is kind of obsessed with like, uh, getting like, knowledge and wisdom and finding out the future. He is one eye because he gave up one, uh, so he was able to drink from uh, the well of Mimir, who's kind of renowned as being one of the kind of, kind of wisest guy in the world. But that wasn't enough for Odin because he then cut off that guy's head. Uh, so, so we have, just to have it on hand, and it, it, it was some after the lives, so we just like, talk to him, whatever he needs his, uh, his advice. Um, he also hung himself uh, from a branch of Big Vessel and uh, lay dead there for, uh, I forget it was, uh, five days or seven days. And he and his soul then traveled to the afterlife and he uh, found out about the runic alphabet. He was a crazy, crazy dude. <laughs> and Thor, God of Thunder, um, is son of Odin and he wielded the mighty hammer of uh, Mjolnir. And uh, basically, he just went off, usually as often adventurous, just uh, beating up frost giants. That was his uh, main thing to do. Uh, he just loved doing that. Um, he rode around a chariot here, uh, pulled by two goats called Toot Nasher and Toot Grinder as well. And Loki, a trickster guy. He was half half Aesir and half uh, half frost giant. And um, like I said, actually, like this man said here, he was a bit of a kinky guy. He was always like shape shifting to different things, so usually to some, some mischievous end. He starts off being, you know. A bit, of a, a bit of an annoyance, a bit of a, you know, a, bit of a jokey guy, but over time... Sorry, I'm late! I'm glad to hear you can defend yourself against these wild allegations. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, 
yeah. It's not just kind of mischievous and just being a bit of a, a, bit of a kill, but it becomes kind of more and more evil. And it kind of comes to a head when he engineers the deaths of uh, Balder, who he was kind of just a most sound out, like decent guy with the gods, so everybody liked him. That it actually got the entire all of creation to agree, you know, that, that it was not not kill him, you know, from the smallest little stone to like and the lot of people. He engineered his death. Anyways. And for that he was bound up uh, tied to a rock with a snake hanging over there them after uh, venom onto him. And he would like to ride it in pain. And his riding in pain is what uh, to believe what uh, made earthquakes in the world. Hmm? Yes, the guys, everything except mistletoe that yeah. uh, agreed to not kill Baldur, but then I think it'll be your play, the game dance. We uh, kiss on Britney, but at least that's... Yeah, I don't know if you know about me, I guess. <laughs> For a noble deity, if you have um, Heimdall, who's the uh, watchman of, of the gods, he uh, presides over the, the, the uh, White Foss Rainbow Bridge, and um, <coughs> as, he, as um, at the end of the world, he sound his horn, get a horn, and bring it on there. We have uh, Freak, the wife of Odin, um, who can see into the future but won't tell anybody about it. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't know if that, that's good or bad, but no, what is it? Uh, Freya, the gods of love, and most other things. The kind of thing about the Norse gods is that nearly all of them are the god of war in some way. They're all <laughs> so, um, And you see, if you fight around a chariot uh, pulled by two cats, and we have uh, Freyr, or brother, the god of fertility and fair weather. Uh, he has a magic sword and a golden pig that he hangs around with. <laughs> uh, we have Tyr, the god of law and heroic victory. Um, he's one handed because uh, he lost his hand when they were uh, by, uh, tying up the giant wolf Fenrir. He's the only guy who's brave enough to go near and try and tie him up. And we've got Baldur the Bear, he's this, as before mentioned, pretty sound that guy who died. And that brings about Ragnarok, the doom of the gods. This is the, the Norse end of the world thing. It'll be preceded by uh, be a, uh, of three winters without a summer, the, the film bottom winter, I believe it's called. And there'll be great wars and natural disasters. And then the sky will split open and the fire giants will uh, come out upon the world to, to, to destroy it. And so that then the gods will be able to come into battle and you know, it'll be the, the last fight. Now, there are three kind of um, things that kind of are key to this. They are the kind of children of Loki. Like I said, Loki was a kinky dude. Um, he had he had, had a relationship with this uh, frost, with frost giant Tess, and from that union came uh, three children. One was Fenrir, a giant wolf. Um, he was bound up by the gods. They didn't kill him uh, because uh, they wouldn't allow the blood to stain the sacred ground of Asgard. And, um, he yeah, yeah. sired the wolves uh, Skull and Hati, who chased some of the moon. And he killed, he's what called to kill Odin at Ragnarok. Uh, but uh, Odin's son will get revenge on him by tearing his uh, jaws apart and killing him. Uh, Jorman Gand, uh, the war serpent. Um, Odin cast it into the sea and it grew so large that it, it was able to encircle the world and got so big until it was able to bite onto its own tail. It's a depiction uh, kind of of the Euro of Boros, but it's actually an Egyptian symbol. Whereas if you're familiar, say, with Full Metal Alchemist, um, you may know what they, what's much become the homunculi, uh, that symbol on themselves. And he kills Thor of Ragnarok, um, but uh, was, uh, Thor kills uh, Jorma Gang, but he dies from the spell and he takes nine steps before falling down there. And then there's Hel, the ruler of the underworld, but the gods took out pity on her, um, this being who gave her a job uh, just uh, taking care of, of the afterlife. Now, the Helheim was where everybody who, who, who didn't die in battle went. So all you kind of poor sides were just like a uh, uh, merchant or a farmer or a fisherman. That's where you went and you died. Um, she's pretty okay, but she has built um, that elf bar, which is um, built from the untrimmed nail of the dead. And it was like a, it was like a very good custom uh, in like North society where you know, they make sure that their the corpse was like well groomed and, like, you know, and make sure that the nails are trimmed because didn't want to be speeding up the uh, building of the ship or, and then bring it upon the end of the world under themselves. There are some grey material as well. We have like, stories about uh, Sigurd or Siegfried, um, who is uh, primarily kind of more a North Germanic thing. He's a legendary warrior. Um, he killed the dragon's back and then bathed in his blood and gained the power of invulnerability, except for one spot on his back where a leaf came on and then um, left the spot uh, here blood. His father was killed in battle by Odin, but 
I guess Owen kind of looked out for him and he appeared to him before like a wise old man kind of trying to steer him on the right path and even told him how to get killed back there. And then he uh, then got married to the Valkyrie Brindle there. Um, also related to that then is that the Ring of the Nibelon, which is um, it's a map of some Richard Wagner, um, detailing the kind of, uh, about a kind of struggle for a ring that's all powerful and, and the gods want it, uh, the dwarves want it, the giants want it, and it's, uh, it's an epic cycle of that. So, so move on to kind of where we begin now. Um, if Little Norse Prince or um, Hollis Prince of the Sun. Another 68 film from uh, Isao Takahata, who is, um, you may know he works uh, with Studio Ghibli. He, they let him make a film like, every 10 years or so. Um, so wait a minute. It's about like, a young boy uh, who lives in Iron Age Scandinavia and he helps out a, a rock giant by putting like, a sword on his back. And that sword is, is the sword of the sun. And the wielders were told you know, to uh, kill the wizard uh, who's like the. Um, what was his name? Grand Wizard. Grunwald, who was uh, causing trouble, and um, Hollis then goes home to his home village. He was cast out of that to kill Grunwald in a sore piece. And so, besides that, it's not really a lot of kind of related things, but we do know since we're looking at a Viking funeral. Um, usually, <coughs> um, a, when like a Viking died, they would like, uh, bury him in a ship or uh, on a great mountain, then send the blaze. I don't know if I was. I got a little bit of a trailer for it here. Let's see if it plays. Oops.
Um, so it's, it's about um, these uh, young men who uh, are, are trained all over the world and they gather to um, be the loyal knights of uh, the incarnation of Athena. And they all wear um, uh, armor that enhances that they're that branched off called the Cosmo. But uh, basically, every cell in your body is kind of like uh, its own little star. If they have the harness power, you can you know, do, some, do, do amazing things. Um, a lot of the guys are kind of based upon um, uh, the constellations and other kind of Greek things. So we have like uh, Pegasus, Seiya, uh, um, we have um, Phoenix Icky, and then the blonde guy in the middle there is uh, the Swan Yoga. <laughs> but he's actually one of the tougher guys. But he does have Swan Kung Fu, which is kind of flapping his wings and pirouetting around. <laughs> yeah. Now, it was uh, the Asgard arc, which was an anime only thing. Um, they kind, of, they kind of ran off like uh, Greek stuff to adapt, so they thought, well, let's uh, do some Norse things as well. So we have um, them traveling to Asgard, been taken over by an evil force, and the kind of guys were similar to the saints. Uh, they they wear armor, and they uh, used the cosmo martial art as well. But they've uh, their leader Hilda has been uh, being mind controlled into being evil, and so they've been turned against it. Um, despite them all being uh, no, tough guys. They all have, each of them have like, incredibly tragic pasts and all come to life in the little bit. Yeah. And, they're, and they each uh, correspond to one of the stars in the Big Dipper as well. It's also adapted to the same say, movie too. Um, not only the same characters, but the same uh, location of Asgard, but uh, it's, it's not very good. It's, it's a bit confusing and kind of boring. Uh, if you want to watch it, I'd say come into the Asgard arc. And uh, also, if you love guys getting smashed into walls, then Saint Seiya uh, Asgard gets a cartoon for you, as it happens uh, multiple times each episode, as I will now demonstrate. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
And uh, there's also um, a world of demons, and they have their own computer called Neat Hog. And uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
to start that mystery, but also some other mysteries. So he has an agency where he's a uh, detective, and he, comes, he meets up with this girl, um, Mayura, who's a maniac for mysteries, and uh, basically hires herself onto his, uh, onto his team. And then um, you have his, uh, his manservant, uh, Yamino, um, who's actually his son, Jormungand, is a war servant. Uh, on the top right there is um, the god Thor, in, uh, the guy is an average high school student who works about like 50 part time jobs. And his, uh, his uh, mule near the, in, in this form is uh, actually a wooden sword. Uh, the bottom left there, we have uh, Freya, uh, the god of other stuff, who was a uh, kissing form of like uh, a adorable little girl, uh, but can uh, change into her adult form or, uh, at, at will. And of course, we have uh, Fenrir, who is uh, in the form of, uh, of, of an adorable foul mouth puppy. <laughs> Uh, this is basically the craggy kid, but um, 
He also uh, learns athletic gravity, also learns uh, Muay Thai, uh, Chinese soft style martial arts, Jiu Jitsu, and weapon skills. Um, it's not an effort to, because he gets bullied in school, so he learns self defense uh, and trying to get better. But he, gets, he gets too good at it, and so he has like, delinquents and bullies that targeting him, and it's getting, he gets stronger and stronger, and they get stronger and stronger too. Now, his main kind of guy he's talking about is a gang of tops called the Ragnarok group. Uh, initial antagonists of the manga and then the primary antagonists of the, of the two anime seasons. And uh, they're, they're eight top guys, um, a lot of them draw their um, kind of code names out of their nicknames from those picks. We have like uh, in the middle there, you can kind of make them off purple here, is Odin. Because um, yeah, Odin, he sees all, he, he can like, uh, read your movements, and if you see him move once, you can block against it again. They have like Thor, who is a big super wrestler, but it's like practical sumo, and uh, kind of. <laughs> We can popularize it. We have Loki, who like, doesn't really fight too much, he's more of a schemer. And we have uh, the Valky Valkyria, uh, who, her athlete, uh, they, all the guys she beats up, she uh, takes them in and adds them on to her own gang. And you also get crazy guys like, um, like Siegfried, uh, who is seemingly invincible, like his namesake, because he gets knocked out and back up again. And we have a little clip of human action right here. Ah, uh, I you are? Band, uh, in order to get revenge against their leader. 
And this also gets us back to the like, Viking invasion of Britain. Um, so it's actually, uh, there's actually a lot of historical like, uh, facts about this as well. So you see have this uh, lovely map of, uh, of uh, how they fish out of their gas and where they settled. Um, they've got something from Ireland, coming from, from Denmark, like that. Uh, a, lot, a, lot the, a lot of the particular characters that are actually were actually real stuff of people that you that were, uh, you know, from uh, back in the time. Uh, it was a part of like the uh, rise of like uh, Prince Canute, who becomes like uh, uh, King Canute the Great. Um, also, um, Asplat here, who's the leader of the mercenary band, he's at also as well. Uh, the descendant of Arturius, who was the Roman general who um, Arthurian made his rise from. Now, um, then these guys being Vikings now, they believe in obviously in Norse stuff, and uh, we have like a Thor right here uh, comparing uh, <laughs> Prince Canute and not favorably to Freya. And um, the, the, the duty I was like uh, trash talking about uh, the Christian who in order to invade. We see we have uh, Jesus here and the dog, but like Thor snapping a twig. But also at the time, um, it was when said now was when the Christianization of uh, the Viking people was kind of uh, active again, and um, we see the guys praying as well. Um, so this guy is blessing himself. Uh, it's actually uh, Leif Eriksson, who was um, was actually a man who discovered Vinland, you no, know, had the area of North America where they settled, and also I discovered Iceland too. And um, also hilariously violent. Um, <laughs> Have a character here at Four Kill It All, was also a real dude. Uh, I'm not sure if he was uh, actually doing that now, but he's like shredding guys like paper with a pair of axes. <coughs> and ask that, uh, pretty handy with, with, with the beheadings here. Uh, if that's not good enough, yeah, it goes, goes to go the other way. And we have Thor Kill as well, straight cold cock in a horse right in the, right in the neck. <laughs> and um, Thor's, uh, 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 Thor's bad, uh, Thor Finn's better than Thor's there on the left now. Um, he kind of. Uh, left behind the way, the way of killing, but instead he used about some kind of Viking karate that he used to do. <laughs> uh, that, that's a true way of the warrior. And that's recently got a license as well, I think, by, uh, by Biz or Vertical, something like that. So that'll be actually available to uh, pick up in shops uh, sometime next year, so look out for it. And that is just about it now. Um, now, by no means is that everything to do with North mythology and anime. That's just uh, some more notable examples that I believe. You know, if there's anything I missed, I apologize. But uh, sorry, so much time. Maybe we can grab this. I can wrap this up now. Um, where you want to find me? A podcast, uh, Secret Server Madness, about uh, character animation of all rights, including a bit of anime. It's available at secretservermadness.blogspot.com. And if you enjoyed this panel, or, or indeed did enjoy it, you can direct all the place to my Twitter here at Nightless Cage. Um, so yes, I uh, hope you all enjoyed this, hope you're uh, all uh, informed and educated a bit and had a good time. So uh, and thank you all for coming. Uh, <laughs>